another version of a paper Enigma machine is the Pringles can paper Enigma machine. It works and it's the same principle as the actual Enigma machine, the same principle as the Michael Koss paper Enigma machine we used in class. Um, it's just, uh, I think, it looks pretty cool. I, thought, I mean, look at that. Isn't that neat? And each one of these rings turns, right? So now, I've sent out these printouts. This is by a company, Franklin Heat Limited. And this was designed on A4 paper, which is longer than our letter size paper. So when you print it out, you have to print it at 100%, even though it will cause the bottom to be cut off. We won't be using these down here for this particular project, but you have to have it printed out 100% or this strip that you cut out is not gonna be long enough to wrap all the way around and match up with its other side. So make sure you print it out at 100%, even though it cuts off the bottom. That's fine, we're just gonna cut out these. And here you have your input output, you have your rotors one, two, three on page two, you have your reflectors B or C and rotors four and five. And you can use any combination of rotors and either reflector and it's gonna work the same way just like the real Enigma machine. Now for this project, I've used the B reflector that's here on the left. I've used rotors one, two, and three. And then there's our input output. All right, so. After you've cut those out and you've carefully wrapped them around and tape them, you want to tape them kind of tight so they don't easily flop around, but you still have to be able to twist them. There you go. Now, let's decode this message I have right here. Now, <clears throat> the, the key setting, the initial setting that this message was decoded in, are the letters K, E, and T. So our initial settings are K, E, D. That means on the ink machine, you'd line up your rotors initially at K, E, and T, or their numerical equivalents. But here, you'll notice that on the reflector, we have a gray bar, and over here on the input output, we have a gray bar. Our starting position will have those two facing each other on the same line. Right? Then inside here is where we will set up our initial settings. So let's go with K. So I'm gonna line this up here, H, I, there it is, there's K, E, there we go, T, and A. So here, from this gray bar to this bar, straight across we have K, E, T. This is our initial setting, we are now good to go. So now we're going to decode H U B U N H U B N E Q. What could it possibly say? I wonder. Well, let's find out. As with all, as with the either the other paper ending machine or the actual ending machine, as soon as I press the letter eight to try and decode it, it's going to cause this rightmost rotor to click one time. So I will do that now. Click. Now I want to go to the H. There it is, and I'm going to start off from the input output and travel across. So it's gonna go from here over here to D. I'm just following the lines from D up there, good. Over here, over to J, I'm in the reflector. It comes back down here, comes back out. Goes over here, over to Q, and over to E. So it looks like our first letter when decoded is E. Excellent. All right, now I want to decode the next letter, U. So again, the first thing, this rotor goes down one click. Click. Now I go to U. There's U. Starts off, it goes way down here over to E. Comes up over to T. Over here to J. J back to D. Over here to A, to R. And down here to N. What could it be? E, N, E, N what? Enact, enable, I just don't know. Let's go to the next number letter. Now, you see, this is exciting. When this gray box appears on your rotors, that means when you turn that rotor the next time, it moves the rotor next to it. So that's what's going to happen here. We're gonna press the letter B, that's gonna cause this first rotor 
to click one time, click, but because we moved that gray box, it causes this rotor to click one time, click, and yes, that's right, because we moved this gray box, it causes this rotor to click one time, click. Now, B, 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 here's B. So I start off, I journey over here, there it goes, okay. Up here, over there, down here, over here, over there, over there to I, E-N-I, E-N-I, what could that be? E-N-I, E-N-I, I don't know. Let's look at the next letter. Okay, there we go, there we are. So move this one click, click, N. Let's see, and here we are. And goes here. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. Over to Y, on the V, all the way down here. And back down here, over here, over to G. G, E N I G. What could that be? I, I don't know. E, E night, E night. Hmm, I don't know. Let's see. E. So, click. Here's E. I'm gonna go over here, okay. Up here, oh, over there, there we go, and over here. Oh, and down here, oh, looky there, boot and over here, uh-huh. Mm-hmm, okay, up here. And all the way down to here, M. Oh, see, I think I think I know what the message is now, but let's just check the last letter just to be sure. All right, so let's go click. I'm starting with Q. Here we are. So Q comes over here, goes down here, over here, over there, and there, and there, over here, over here, and up there, and over here, and there, and there, and... To A, oh my word. That spelled enigma, huh? Who would have guessed? There you go. As long as you know the setting, this both decodes and encodes. Okay? If I want to verify that that is the case, let's do that for a couple of letters here. So I'm gonna set my Pringles can enigma machine back to its initial settings, K, E, and T. And now we'll go the other direction. E should give us back H. So, as always, I will, there's my starting, there we go, there we go, K-E-T, good to go. This will go click. And I start with E. So E goes here and over here, well, straight across there, over to D, J, right down here like this, over there. So D over to H. Oh, look at there. E was H. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Um, this again. I hope I hope you enjoy this. I think it's I think it's a blast. So there you go. Thanks very much.